manager in the research and innovation department um, and I will be emceeing this morning's event. Uh, welcome to Innovation Week uh, Academic Day. We're very excited uh, to share with you some projects um, and initiatives that are happening um, across the campus that are focused on academics. Uh, next up we have Connie Beck, uh, coordinator and professor in the pharmacy technician program. Thank you, Andrea. I'm going to share my screen. I hope it's going to be OK. Can you see it? Can no, some of you see the slides? No? OK. okay. <laughs> All right, let me close this. How about now? Okay. Yes. OK, great. Thanks so much. Um, so I'm talking about a standardized work integrated learning that we're doing across Ontario, actually. Um, when the pandemic hit, so a little bit of history before I get into what we're doing. Um, when it started, all of the student placements um, back in March 2020 were canceled. Um, hospitals weren't going to take students for their placements. And I don't know if you think about when I think back, you know, it was such a scary time and it was like the end of the world. And we just we couldn't go anywhere. We couldn't do anything. We were just going to if we saw each other like death was imminent. Right. Um, so, <laughs> so <laughs> truly. So everything shut down. And it gave us an opportunity as a group of coordinators of the pharmacy technician across Ontario to rethink what we've been doing, right? Just as all of us in every program, in whatever you're working, we all had to rethink how we're, how we're working, what we're doing, and how we're going to do it um, to meet the new challenges and the new world that we were in. Um, so for, for the pharmacy technician program, having no hospital placements and no community placements was a huge challenge. Um, our students all across Ontario are required to, for our accreditation standards, they're required to have 360 hours in real life placement. Um, so going to zero, we had no students graduating. We could not graduate any of our students. So um, we met with the accreditors. We were faced with a different um, set of challenges. Um, because we were told just wait, just wait, it's gonna be okay. Things will go back. Well, here we are, they did not, right? Um, so the first set that opened up were community pharmacies because they were hit hard, right? They were taking over for doctors because you couldn't see your doctor anymore. They wouldn't let you come into the office. Um, so they needed, they needed support. So they started taking our students for placement, um, but hospitals would not. So the Ministry of Colleges and Universities actually reached out to our group um, to say, can you find a solution? We need to have a solution to this problem because we've promised that no students are going to be affected. I don't know if you all know about that province, but they made that promise. Um, and then pharmacy technicians were the only healthcare professional group in the college system that did not have a solution. So, um, and that was because we were faced with um, the challenge of accreditors telling us that we must, we must have placement, okay, in a hospital system that would not. So, as we looked forward to solutions, we found the work integrated learning system as a great opportunity for our students to be able to demonstrate the competencies that they had learned throughout the program. Whoa, did I just lose my screen? I did, I hit a button, sorry. Okay, better, can you see it again? Yeah, yes, thanks, yes. okay, thank you. Um, so we decided to do this um, as a whole. There's 11 colleges on Ontario who have a pharmacy technician program and we were all facing the same problem. So we decided to work on it together. So here are the colleges that were involved and are still involved in this initiative. 
and solution and different way of teaching that we're moving forward to now um, as a whole, as a province together um, for our program. We were supported, we are still supported um, by two different organizations. So the Business and Higher Education Roundtable and the Ontario Pharmacists Association have become our partners in order to have this work integrated system be developed and then implemented across the province. So uh, what is this WILL system, this work integrated learning system? It is focused on work-based situational scenarios, the student learning experience and standardization of the setup. So the first thing that we needed to do is develop these work-based situational scenarios. And that is really, um, we have a team of subject matter experts who were tasked with um, coming up with different kinds of scenarios that would happen in hospital practice. And then developing the scenario of how we would um, roll it out in the environments that we have. They're comprised of um, simulations, um, case study scenarios, but they're meant, the way that they're developed is to provide the student with a context first. So we're pretending we're in a real environment, you know, X, Y, and Z has just happened. This is what's in front of you now for you to complete the task. So how are you going to complete it? So there's a higher level of critical thinking required from the students to solve the problem. It's no longer like a simulation in a regular lab environment where we tell them, OK, go do this. They go do it. Then they come back and they submit their work and you're like, OK, yes or no, you did good. You did bad. Here's what you need to improve. Right. Um, it's more problem solving a higher level because they get a full situation and then they have to decide what's that right thing to do after the situation they're also they're kind of pretending right that they are in a workplace so they will report back to their supervisor who's then the professor this is what I've done to solve this problem and then there will be that kind of discussion that we would typically have as a debrief after some simulations in a lab and that's the same thing that happens in practice, right? You tell your boss, this is what I've done to solve this. And they tell you, oh, that was good. But maybe we could still do X, Y, Z, right? Um, whatever it is. So it's that kind of different way of thinking, um, how it's been designed. We have, um, just like every other program, we have VLOs and the essential employability skills. So all of the scenarios when we when we worked with the I worked with the SMEs to create it, we had to make sure we're encompassing all the v, VLOs and essential employability skills. For our program, we also have two sets of national standards that we need to um, meet for the student competencies for entry to practice. So we also mapped our every single scenario um, to these two national standards to make sure we were meeting all of the competencies for hospital practice and entry to practice. We provided on the paperwork, the scenario development, the work integrated learning forms that we're providing across the province to every college, um, the task instructions, we really felt that it needed to be standardized. They got assessment rubrics with detailed evaluation criteria, and we were evaluating both hard and soft skills, right? The next thing that we wanted to do was make sure that it was standardized. So in um, it was one of the big aha moments, and maybe we never had to think about it before the pandemic, but from one um, professional to another professional, the way that I decide what's the minimum standard that the student needs to meet, what I consider is the minimum standard for any task may be different than the other professional who's judging them when they go to the hospital or from one college to another. 
we didn't have um, a standardized minimum level of competency required across the entire um, province. So when we looked at developing this, we had many conversations with the coordinators across the province to talk about what should that minimum standard be for each kind of competency. And so we are now going to be rolling it out with um, implementing that different standard is what I'm teaching as that minimum level, the same as you know Mohawk or St. Clair or Centennial, and now it will be. So that's really interesting, I think. Um, just a little bit of workflow, and I see that I'm already like at time, so I'll be faster here. Um, we have a student cohort, oops, it went forward, sorry. Hmm, how do I, previous. Um, so we have a student cohort who enters the pharmacy lab and it's a simulated workplace and they're going to go through, they're going to have their individual scenarios with their feedback. Um, and if it's an individual, they're going to be doing the individual actioning of work. They'll have a pass or no pass. Um, and then it kind of just keeps going around for every scenario. Okay. So we're hoping that they're going to have um, strengthening of some key skills that these scenarios will provide. So a strengthening in situational assessment, documentation and escalation, professional practice and application, time management, inter and intra-professional interactions, and then patient interactions as well. Uh, finally, we have standardized setup and assessment. So the detailed information um, in each scenario provides standardization in operating procedures for each scenario, um, how they will set up and manage the process of enrolling students into this um, study and the instruction how they're managing it and the assessment is all very standardized for every scenario. We are collecting feedback at the end of this. Um, so when students are at intake for the assessment, they're filling out an intake form, um, they're providing feedback on individual scenarios, both the faculty and the students are. And then at the end, they're providing their feedback, both faculty and student, on their overall experience after they've finished, um, you know, a battery of scenarios. So I have some benefits, uh, what we think are going to be benefits. I guess we're going to see if we're right or wrong. I think that will be right, but we'll see um, that they're engaged. So the students are more engaged in their um, what they're doing right in these scenarios. They have to be critically thinking. They, they don't have a choice but being actively engaged because if they choose not to be, I don't know how they're going to solve these scenarios that are in front of them, right? They're going to have to be thinking about it. Um, we have the standardized evaluation of competency-based outcomes, and that's going to be provincial. So that's very exciting. Um, and we have increased control over the outcomes and the assessment. Um, so we thought, where will we go next with this? Um, and as part of the surveys that we've put together, you know, do you want more of this thing? Sorry, I don't know why it's going forward. I didn't touch it that time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Do we want more of this kind of scenarios? Can we change some of our curriculum provincially? Uh, we've also talked about, you know, with the university programs um, for pharmacy, are they doing something like this? Would this be helpful for them? So how can, you know, how can we, it very much is scalable the way that we've developed it. Um, and we're involving everyone in it. Um, so the expertise of the colleges, our governing body, we have our um, accreditation organization and our advocacy body involved right now. And really standardizing the results is going to increase the level of knowledge and the expectation, I think, for the graduates. So that's it. Sorry, I was quick at the end there when I saw the time. Um, if you do want more information, please, please feel free to reach out to me. I don't even think I introduced myself, but Andrea did, right? So yes. 
I'm Connie Beck, um, coordinator and professor of the pharmacy technician program. Thank you for listening. Thank you for having me, Andrea. Thanks so much, Thanks Connie. So much. Um, this was a, a project that uh, uh, the Innovation Institute um, worked with Connie um, to get off the ground and going. And it was really um, a great example of how the Institute can collaborate with our academics um, on, you know, pr innovative projects that need a little extra support that you might not necessarily have the time or resources to dedicate to. Um, I know Connie uh, worked very, very hard um, to bring in all those extra partners and, and it was very time consuming. So we were really happy to help out in other areas such as proposal development and, you know, writing letters of support and things like that, that um, she uh, needed help with. So uh, thank you. And I'm really excited to see the results of this project. It was uh, a really great idea. Thanks, Connie.